If you're looking for a new way to track your projects and tasks, I would definitely recommend checking out Airtable. Now, yes, this is a topic that we've covered before, but in this video, we're going to be going into detail about how you can leverage Airtable's blocks to get some really great insights about the progress of your different projects and tasks. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to see all the different ways that we can help you with that, swing by our website. We have a free crash course that you can take and a lot of other resources we put together. But without further ado, let's just jump into the whole purpose of this video, and that is leveraging the Airtable blocks to really get some powerful insights about your projects and tasks. So taking a look at my screen here, you see that I've got a nice little dashboard already built inside of my Airtable database. Now, this is our end goal, folks. This is where we're heading. So we're going to be getting to, you know, track a chart in terms of who we owe money to. We're going to be able to see our total accounts payable here. We're going to be able to give people a way to uh, track their time inside of our database. And we're going to be able to see a Gantt chart view of our different projects. All of this goes together to make this really nice dashboard where we get automatic insights based on the underlying data. But first, before we get into all of this good stuff, let's talk about how we set up that underlying data. So closing this down, we're gonna take a look at our projects and tasks database. Now this is pretty straightforward, guys. It's just two tables. You see, we've got projects and we've got tasks. Now a project is kind of that higher level thing, right? It's, it's the big picture and it connects to multiple tasks. And so we have a linked relationship between projects here and they link to tasks here. And inside the tasks, tasks have some requirements. Every task has to follow these rules. It has to relate to a project. It has to have a person in charge. There's somebody on your team who's responsible for that. It has to have a start date and ultimately a duration of time that we track as we put that task into the world, right? And so that duration of time, you know, when we leverage it with our start date, will also produce an end date. And there's a lot of different logic pieces that are going into how we're calculating that end date, which I'll be going into some detail on. But high level, we also, you know, have a different hourly rate per person. I've built a little switch formula here that's looking at the person in charge and it's saying, well, depending on who's in charge of this project, we have a different hourly rate associated with each person. And so, you know, by changing this person uh, in charge, then we also get an instant update on that hourly rate. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that level. Now, moving on, we've got, again, the duration uh, in minutes that have gone into put putting this uh, task into the world. And so then using the hourly rate, we can multiply the duration times the hourly rate. And since the duration's in minutes, we have to divide by 60. And then that tells us how much we're going to owe for the people who are doing work on these projects, assuming this is, you know, a freelancer or contract labor, something like that. Now we've got a couple other fancy fields. So let me describe how we're using these different end dates. So when we start our project and task relationship, you know, we build a project and then we assign tasks to it and we're going to estimate, you know, this task should start on this day and should end around this time or this day. So that is our start date end date. And then when we actually perform the task, we can track when we last modified the duration. So whenever I make a change here, let's suppose I logged some more time. As soon as I change that, because we're using a last modified time here, uh, then that last modified time updates accordingly. So taking a look here, we have a last modified time field and we're saying when duration is updated, then we want to record that timestamp. And then we have what we call an actual end date. So let me scroll over and show you the different fields here. Uh, I'll get to run over or ran over in just a moment. So when we finish this task, we mark it complete. And so only in the case where a task is marked complete, are we going to have an actual end date, right? Before we mark it complete, we don't know what that is. And so we can take a look at this and say, well, when a task is marked complete, then we know that the actual end date is whatever the last day and time is that we added to our duration minutes. So 
as we perform this task, it when we mark it complete, whenever the last time we performed time on it is going to be the date that we record this actually ending. And we can compare that to the uh, to the estimated end date. So we're just putting a formula here that says, hey, if there is an actual end date, that is that the task has been completed, right? If that exists, then we want to be that actual end date. But if it doesn't exist, then we want to reflect the estimated end date. And then lastly, we built a run over formula. And this is just saying, in, in layman's terms, it says, hey, if the task is complete and it was completed after the end date, then we need to mark it as running over. And so over here, you can see that in this case, in this uh, first task here, the task was estimated to end on 214, but it actually ended the last time that we actually uh, you know, logged time here was just a moment ago. And so it's recorded as 215 as the actual end date. And so since that's the case, we want to make sure that this gets marked as run over. And so we're putting in that little uh, uh, formula field to do that for us. And then lastly, we have a checkbox for paid. Now, I realize I just went through a lot of different fields. Again, we've kind of covered some of these in a previous video. So check that out if you want more in depth on that. Now, the real purpose of, of this video is to look at these blocks and to really get some insights in terms of how we can run our business and run it more efficiently using this data. So first and foremost, let's talk about the time tracker block. Now this block is very, very cool because it allows any user who has access to our database to track time that they're investing on a particular task just with a click of a button. So check this out. I can go ahead and let's say I'm you know, going to work on one of the projects that I've been assigned to. I can click start tracking. I select the task from the list that I'm working on. Let's say I'm going to add some time to the development here. So this particular task again is the send survey email task. And as you see, once I select that task, the timer started with the most recent duration, which was just over 30 minutes, and it starts counting in seconds. Now, when I click stop tracking here, it's going to update the duration time. So you now see that this duration time was updated with that few extra seconds that I just added to the clock. And so the part that makes this really great is if you're tracking time and you're tracking efficiency inside your business, when people are working on specific tasks, you can see precisely how much time it's taking them, provided that they remember to use this time tracking uh, device. And again, I'll just you know perform another demonstration for you by clicking start tracking. Then I have to select the, the particular task. In this case, I'm going to do the first task, the onboard new client. And you see that because this is at 62 minutes, it started at an hour and two minutes and it starts counting from there. Once I stop tracking again, it's going to update the time and just add it on top of that. So really quick, really quick and easy way to track time. And if you're about maximizing your efficiency, this is one you don't want to skip out on. All right. So now let's take a look at that Gantt chart. I'm going to pop this one open here and we're going to take a look at, you know, how this is kind of structured. Uh, let me scroll this over just a bit. Now ah, that'll do. So when we set up the Gantt chart going into settings here, we have to tell it what table and what view to look at and then what our start and end date is. And we're grouping these projects or excuse me, we're grouping these by project. So if I wanted to, or if I did have multiple projects, I could collapse them, take a look at each project here, and then expand the tasks associated with that project. You'll also see that the uh, records here are color coded, and this is all relative to the colors that are in the particular base. So you'll see that uh, on my view, I've uh, added some color rules, which I'll go into. And so I can see at a glance what tasks are assigned to this project and where we are in getting those things done. So talking really quickly about those colors, let's take a look at these rules. So I've built four rules. Now, the first rule is if the task is marked complete, and let me just expand this, and the estimated end day is before today, then it's going to be red. Basically, this means, hey, the, excuse me, I misspoke. The task is incomplete. The, the box is not checked, right? So this means, hey, this is an alert, right? It's red for a reason. We're saying this task is not done and it was supposed to be done before today. That's in plain English what this means, right? And so we're, fly we're flagging that red, which is a, a you know warning indicator to us that something is wrong. 
Now, next condition, and by the way, the color conditions here, you'll see here they're assigned the first color uh, rule that they match. So we have to put them in this order in, you know, for a particular reason. Now, the second option is if they are incomplete, that is the box is not checked, then, and they haven't met the first condition, then make them yellow. So again, quick recap, it's red if it's not completed and it's overdue. It's yellow if it's not completed and it's not overdue, right? Step three here, or color three, if it is marked complete, but it ran over the estimated end date. So you remember this uh, formula field that we built over here that presents this over, right? This field right here was created just so that we could have this color purple. So this color purple is basically telling us, hey, the, the task is done, but it ran over schedule. So you probably want to know that at a glance. And then the third box or the fourth color here is if it's not run over, but it's complete, right? And so it will, again, it takes this order in terms of uh, getting it colored. So here at a glance, we can look at that Gantt chart and we can see, okay, this task is done, but it was delayed. This task is done ahead of schedule or on schedule. This task is not done and it's behind schedule. This task is not done, but it's not an alert yet, right? You can make these colors whatever you wanted. I picked these because I thought they stood out, but fully customizable. Okay, let's talk about number three. That is our, our current accounts payable. That is the amount of money that we have to pay out to our contractors. So we've got these people doing all this work inside of our database. And basically the rule here is we don't want to actually pay somebody until that task is marked complete. So in this case, you'll notice that two tasks are complete, right? These first two tasks. And Gareth is the person in charge of both of those. And so, you know, doing that, the math that we built in our formula, we know how much is owed to him. And so this particular summary block is looking at our unpaid tasks view. Unpaid tasks view has just two filters that says, I only want to see records that are not yet paid, meaning we haven't paid our contractor, but we also want to only see records where the task is marked complete. Right? So if both of these rules are, are met, which they are for these two records, then we want them to show up here. Perfect. And so as we make these payments, we're going to notice that our accounts payable is reduced because right now we can see that we owe, you know, the total amount right here, these, the, com the combined two fields, $385 and some change. Well, when we start paying that money, then of course our accounts payable is depleted right? We don't owe that money anymore. So as I mark those boxes, you notice that the, uh, the amount owed here goes down. So this is a great way if you're tracking, you know, high level KPIs, especially financial ones, and you want to see how much, you know, you have outstanding in terms of outstanding debt, great way to bring that in really quickly. Now, lastly, and this is very similar to the, uh, to the other one, uh, to the accounts payable, but this chart is going to show us not only the amount that we owe, but also who it's owed to. So as multiple people perform tasks, they're going to get graphed on the X axis. So every person gets labeled out here. Now, the way that we set that up, if we pop into this is we say the X axis, that is the horizontal axis is the person in charge and the Y axis, the vertical axis axis is the field that which is, you know, we call it a task amount. So this is the amount that we owe and we're going to sum that up. So as more people join the database and are owed money, then we just get more uh, graphs or more bars along our bar graph. So that's it. I mean, I realized we went fast through this, but the idea here is be creative in the way that you use that, uh, the blocks, they are, uh, in, in many ways, kind of like, one of the better secrets of Airtable. I mean, yes, everybody knows they're there, but I know a lot of folks who are using a free account. And in my opinion, it's absolutely worth it to pay a little bit extra and get this kind of functionality because it reflects what's going on in your database and gives you that high level perspective that you need, especially if you're running a business or making important financial decisions. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. 
We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.